Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Hello everyone, so today we are going to talk about casket cooling or LNG preparation that is how is liquefied natural gas prepared. Now the basics of preparation of liquefied natural gas has its root in casket cooling system that is C1 to C4 separation that is we know from the top of the atmospheric distillation unit we obtain C1 to C4. Now this C1 to C4 has to be separated from each other that is C1 has to be separated from C2 has to be separated from C3 and C4. So C2, C3, C4 has to be separated one by one to obtain finally pure C1 in the form of liquefied natural gas and then stored in a chamber and then transferred because LNG is very important in every kind of industry. Liquefied natural gas is very very important. Now the basics of casket cooling we are going to discuss not the entire mechanism of a casket cooler but the basics engineering associated with the casket cooling. There is a concept associated with casket cooling. What is casket cooling? Before we go to casket cooling, you need to remember two points. That is, when the pressure increases, boiling point increases, when the pressure decreases, boiling point decreases. Now, we have discussed basically the boiling point of all the cuts present in C1 to C4. That is, minus 161.5 degrees Celsius is the uh, boiling point of natural gas at one atmospheric pressure. For C2 cut, that is, it may have butane, it may have ethane, ethene, or ethyne. It's minus 80 to minus 90 degrees Celsius. For ethane, it is minus 80, 90 degrees Celsius to be very precise. C3 propane, uh, propane, propane, propane's boiling point is minus 42 degrees Celsius, so it ranges around minus 40 to minus 50 degrees Celsius. For uh, but cut, that is, uh, butane, butene, butyne, butadiene. It is minus 1 to minus 10 degrees Celsius. That is what it ranges. For butane, it is minus 1 degree Celsius. All of this is at one atmospheric pressure. Now, as soon as this one atmospheric pressure becomes two atmospheric pressure, three atmospheric pressure, these boiling points will increase. This boiling point will tend towards being a little more positive. Now, what happens is, first of all, primarily when you are treating the C1 to C4 for the preparation of LNG, you separate all the other cuts of petroleum, that is C5, C6, C7, C8, you have separated all of them, you have cooled them, you have transformed them into liquid and separated them. You have even cooled down water, you have separated them, that from the system as well. So whatever is there, supposedly at 25 degrees Celsius in the chamber at room temperature is gas, gas or vapor rather. In the vapor state, C1 to C4 is present at 25 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric pressure. Now what I do is, Primarily, I increase the pressure. From at one atmospheric pressure, I move to three atmospheric pressure. Now, this fellow, C4, which used to boil at supposedly minus one degree Celsius, at at one atmospheric pressure, will now boil at 10 degree Celsius, at three atmospheric pressure. Now, still it is at the, uh, at the gaseous state, because my temperature is 25 degree Celsius, so it is still at the atmospheric pressure of 10 degrees Celsius, C4 is vapor. Also, C1, C2, C3 is necessarily in vapor state because their boiling point is very low. So, all of them are in vapor state. Now, what I do is I introduce cold water in the system. Cold water. Now, this cold water has a temperature of supposedly 3 to 5 degrees Celsius, that is, icy cold water. 3 to 5 degrees Celsius, when it comes in contact with the gases in the chamber at 25 degrees Celsius, after heat exchanging, the temperature supposedly becomes 9 degrees Celsius. Now, what happens is, C4, which was at 3 atmospheric pressure, whose boiling point was, TBP was 10 degrees Celsius, converts into liquid at 9 degrees Celsius. When it, the, the temperature reaches 9 degrees Celsius, C4 from vapor state converts to converts to C4 liquid state. So this is what happens. Whenever the temperature goes below 10 degrees Celsius in the chamber, C4 converts to liquid. Whereas C1 to C3 remains as gas. So what happens is, C4 converted to liquid, settles down 
at 9 degrees Celsius. It is collected as liquid. Now this C4, what is done with this liquid C4 is the pressure that was shooted up initially is now decreased. Now as the pressure is decreased, what will happen? The boiling point will decrease. Now as soon as the boiling point decreases, the tendency of gas formation of C4 is increases. That is gas, that is C4 which was collected as liquid tries to go back to gaseous state. In the process, it will maintain equilibrium as we lower the pressure, it will maintain equilibrium with the gas that is collected over it. So, some amount of C4 will convert to vapor, cooling down the rest of the liquid. So, what happens is, I give some amount of specific heat to the remaining portion of C4 so that it can evaporate, taking it as later heat of vaporization. So when it evaporates, I cool down myself. So a part, this is evaporative cooling, a part of C4 itself cools down to evaporate the other part of C4 because it's a completely insulated shape, but it is insulated. So first we increase the pressure, we introduce cold water, we separate C4 as liquid, then we flash it by decreasing the pressure. As we flash it, some amount of C4 will form, we'll try to form vapor to reach equilibrium as the pressure is decreased. When it forms vapor, the remaining liquid portion of C4 cools down. And it cools down to a temperature of minus 20 to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Now what happens is, we introduce this cold C4 liquid in the chamber back again where C1 to C3 is present and C4 we have already separated. We introduce this cold C4 at minus 20 degrees Celsius and we increase the pressure in the chamber once again to, uh, to 3 atmospheric pressure. Now, he used to, this fellow used to boil at minus 42 at 1 atmospheric pressure, it used to boil at minus 42 degrees Celsius at 3 atmospheric pressure, it will have a boiling temperature minus 20, uh, minus supposedly minus 20 degrees Celsius. So as soon as it comes in contact with this minus 20 degrees Celsius of C4, the C3 will convert into liquid from the first state. So it is basically cooling with the obtained C4, the chamber by increasing the pressure and maintaining the temperature such that C3 vapor converts into C3 liquid at the atmospheric pressure and with the introduction of C4 cold at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Similarly, what happens is this C4, C3, once it converts into liquid, this is further, this C3 is further treated in a chamber where the pressure, the C3 liquid is treated in the chamber where the pressure is decreased. As the pressure is decreased, some amount of C3 tries to evaporate as vapors cooling down the rest of the liquid and the temperature becomes minus 50 degrees Celsius. Now we introduce this minus 50 degrees Celsius C3 in the casket cooler of C1 and C2. C1, C2. We introduce C3 at minus 50 degrees Celsius and we increase the pressure to 3 atmospheric pressure such that the boiling point comes down from minus 80, the boiling point of C2 comes down from minus 80 to minus 50 degrees Celsius and coming in contact with the C3, it boils up. As soon as this C2 boils up, all we are left with is C1. Now we use that C2 cool down that C2 using the same principle as C3 and cool down the C1 and convert that C1 into liquid. So it is basically a principle where we increase the pressure, we introduce a cold liquid to convert the system, to convert the uh, gas into liquid, then decrease the pressure, undergo evaporative cooling, cool down that uh, liquid and use that to further cool down the remaining mixture. I think you have got it. It's a little complex, but it's very, very interesting. So what is left is C1 in the liquid state. Now this is stored in nickel containers because nickel doesn't allow the dissipation or the incoming of nickel alloy, doesn't allow, allow the 
in the coming of, of, of the heat from outside and it remains at minus 161.5 degrees Celsius stored in cryogenic conditions, cryogenic cylinders made of nickel and transferred. This is LNG. For first, C4 is separated by cooling it down, increasing the pressure, cooling it down, separating C4. Then this C4 is flashed to pull down the C4, transfer it back, increase the pressure, separate C3 as liquid, flash it down to further cool down the C3, pour it, cool down the C2, increase the pressure, pull down the C2, form liquid of C2, cool down the C2 further, pour it over C1, cool down the C1 and form liquid, LNG, liquefied natural gas is formed. So that is the principle of casket cooling and that is how you undergo LNG preparation. So from C1 to C4 cut. So I think that is enough for today. Uh, if you liked our video, like it, give it a, a big fat thumbs up and uh, thank you for following us so much. Subscribe to our channel, share it to your friends. Thank you very much.